aware that you may have had a range of leaders to choose from, but you zeroed on me. Thank you very much for inviting me. This morning I was also privileged to be in my school where I attended my S5 and S6. That is Mora High School. And I bring you warm greetings from Mora High School. I don't remember the good moment which the president of the alumni was talking about, where stones were thrown. Because I know that in Mora High School, our motto is Iponishuru Ajoka Kenakukuranot. And also I know the motto of Teso College is I Janakin Kena Animarit. So the president of the alumni will have to take more time to explain to me about that football match. <laughs> Otherwise, I congratulate the awardees for being shining examples of a USC school like this, of a giant school, of a school that has produced very resourceful citizens who are working hard to give back to the school. I thank you, dear Odish. You have demonstrated that the teachers here are doing the correct thing. And relatedly, I thank and congratulate teachers for producing good results. I want only the students to clap for the teachers. I would like to address my first message to the awardees. Now that you have demonstrated that you are the cream, you are the best of the best, I urge you to continue with the same spirit with which you managed to make it to this level. Normally, when someone is awarded, it is already established that you are now on the negative side. Because very few years from now, we shall be asking which institution you graduated from. And by awarding you today, we are sure that you are going to continue being good examples and role models to others. Even those that are not being awarded today, it does not mean that they did not perform well. They equally performed very well, but and I would like to congratulate them as well. <laughs> Secondly, Allow me also to deliver my message to the students' body as, as, as in general. I would like to begin by thanking them for having chosen from S1 or S5 to be admitted or enrolled here in the school It's not an easy thing. See competition. So while you are here in this school of the throughout your study, I urge you to be disciplined students. A student of S4 who does not tease the student of S1. A student of S1 or S2 who is willing to learn from other students who have been here longer. The students of HSC 
who collaborate well with the students of all level. The students whose dress code, whether they are in uniform or not in uniform, demonstrates responsibility. And the students whose physical look also demonstrates maturity. The students who respect their teachers and also respect the non-teaching staff, including the cooks, the cleaners, and the sweepers. The, the students whose action translates to the peaceful well-being of fellow students. And the students who are patient. Secondly, I would like to encourage all of you, whether you are here at school or at home, to be hardworking students. Because hard work is what will make you so much to be like the president of the alumni, to be like the chairperson of board of governors, to be like the RCC, to be like the head teacher here. It is written in the Bible, and I think also in the Quran, that work is a blessing. Do not fear any kind of work. When you are in, cl in the classroom, that's work. Do your work very well in the classroom, but also outside the classroom. Also, I would like to encourage you, the students, to always value teamwork. When you value teamwork, you will never leave your friend behind. And third, fourthly, I would like to urge you to be God-fearing students. The God-fearing students who listen to their chaplain, the God-fearing students who have their personal Bibles and Korans, because you will again go in the Bible and discover the chapter and the verse which is written that the fear of God is a beginning of wisdom. And if you want to excel at school, one of the very important things that you need is wisdom. Because wisdom enables you to interact with others and coexist with everybody, but most importantly, pass your exams. So we expect you to be God-fearing students. Humility is a very important virtue in life. I know some people say that some are born when they are humble, some are born when they are not humble, but we can all learn humility because it is a very strong virtue which enables you to build your character. I urge you to be good time managers. We may not have managed our time in this ceremony because of other circumstances, but it, it is important that you manage your time well so that you can accomplish your tasks. When you manage your time well, you do not interfere with the activities of others. And when you manage your time well, you do your work smart. I would like to thank the College Aloen because it is a school that excels both in science subjects but also in arts. I urge the students and the teachers and I emphasize and stress the teaching and learning of sciences. 
And I would like on behalf of government to encourage teachers to explain to the students why. We are now in the era of digitization, the era of innovation, and the era of science and technology. The era where science is a driver of transformation. We are in the era where science is an equalizer. So I congratulate both the science and art students, but I would like to point out that message of emphasis in teaching and learning of sciences. Arts teachers to think otherwise. There was a small ceremony which was organized by those of uh, the alumni of. Uh, no. They were not the alumni, but Mr. Aklein. Dr. Aklein. Dr. Aklein or Professor Aklein? No. Professor. Are you a professor now? Yes. You have a professor in front of you who is your OB. Why are the people not clapping? It is not easy to reach that rank. So the professor and his team had organized, you remember the ceremony you organized in Silver Springs with the right Reverend Bishop Joseph Echiro. You, you see, you see. They had organized a ceremony where they were raising funds for the construction of Soroti Regina Cheney Cathedral. And the bishop himself was chief guest, and I was also physically present in that ceremony. This message is very important specifically for the teachers. After everybody had made contributions, then the master of ceremony asked if someone had not yet made and he had wanted to close the ceremony. So one gentleman put up his hand that he had not contributed and he was invited and given a microphone. And when he spoke, he said, Lord Bishop, Your Excellency, the Vice President, I am contributing 500,000 towards the construction of the cathedral. And then he added that, but if I were a science teacher, I would have contributed one million. <laughs> so I would like to assure the arts teachers that government values arts teachers the same way we value science teachers. The issue which is before us is being sorted and immediately resources are available, that matter will be solved. We sincerely appreciate the role that all teachers play in human resource development. And we know that teaching is a noble profession. Let me thank the parents of the ODs for the contribution they made. Nasare, for those who are privileged to go to Nasare, or from the time the child goes to P1, up to this stage, the parents sacrifices a lot. I thank the parents, among others, which is privileged to have one of the most seasoned head teachers. You are always getting the best. I don't know, it seems you lobby. I, I, I request the parents and students and all the uh, TCA community to continue giving him support so that the school continues to rise from strength to strength.
The government will definitely continue with the role of providing infrastructure to schools, including the college, providing instructional materials, paying the salaries of teachers, and we expect that the school management and the school uh, community also does their part. We thank you for being a very good example in this sub-region. An example which has demonstrated that USD is a success. An example of the school which has demonstrated that you can be in Deso and perform extremely well, just like those schools which they normally mention, I don't want to mention them. I want to thank you, head teacher and management, for keeping Deso College alive at the top level in terms of performance, nationally. You will always have my support, as I have always given, and I want you to thank, uh, appreciate you for thanking me for the so many times I have visited the Sokole Jaloi. I thought that it was an inconvenience, but I have come here when I was a Minister of Education many times. I have come here now when I am a Vice President, I think, I don't know how many times. So you're one of the very privileged schools that are very accessible, but also I was going to invite leaders to come and interact with you. And I want to thank the religious leaders for your prayers. First, because of your prayers, in the recent reshuffle, his Excellency, the President, maintained all the ministers, all the cabinet members for who come from Jesu in this cabinet. And we don't take your prayers for granted. But also, I thank His Excellency, the President, for the trust. I define us to work with him in cabinet and maintaining us, but also delegating us to do his tasks. It is a trust that is not only on us, the leaders, but it is for all of us, the people of Teso, including you, the students of Teso Clinic. Today, I have been pronounced as an honorary alumni of Teso College Aloe. And I would like, therefore, to put the students on notice that being an alumni of Aloe, you should be able to look at me now as your role model. A role model that is demonstrating to you that you can sit in those classrooms, you can sit under these trees, but if you do correctly what you are being guided to do now, and in the, in the near future, probably you can also become the Vice President. That is the meaning of being role models and mentors and being alumni, members of the alumni. Mr. Okurud here, very clean track record in the civil service. He's not the chairperson of Board of Governors for nothing. It is to show you the way, it is to show you that you can work in civil service and be incorruptible. Corruption is one of the problems which is affecting sub-Saharan Africa now. We want you to know from the time you are still at school that government does not condone corruption. Corruption is evil and corruption is wrong, and corruption is criminal. When you see Professor Akilem there, he has a responsibility in the university. 
But he's sitting in front of you. He was the champ president of the alumni some time back. He is now your role model. He's a mentor. How did he become a professor? He's sitting here to tell you that at one time in your life, if you wish, you can also become a professor. There are a number of you who may be wishing to become teachers. All those teachers are your role models. The head teacher here is a role model. And maybe there is a number of you who will want to be priests and reverends. May I know by show of hands who wants to be a bishop from ETC, ETC. So you have now got the opportunity to have the role model just from the village here, from NOC1 chairman up to vice president, first from the village here. We are village mates. Am I lying? Every day I pass that road, sometimes I get the people of the other side is called what? West Wing, crossing to East Wing, occasionally. So when I pass there, you should say, who is commanding this convoy? One of you may be wanting to join and say, one of you the commander of the vice president. That is how you should be looking at things now. So we want to thank the president for providing you with all types of role models. Yeah, yeah, so. There was a time when there was insurgency in our area here. There was insurgency in Karamoja. There was insurgency in Acholi. There was insurgency in Mudibujo. And all neighboring areas, neighboring Karamoja. But His Excellency, the President is the Commander in Chief. He has pacified and unified the whole country. And because of that peace and unity, we are now here, seated under trees and interrupted. We go to our classrooms in the morning, ready to finish all the schedule of the day, because there is total peace in the country. Let's thank the president for that. And my goal and responsibility here is also to assure you that government will continue maintaining peace and security so that the students can continue learning in their schools and also the parents can continue with their enterprises in order to support the students. So you have all the environment that you need to excel right from school and when you are out of the school. There should be no excuse whatsoever on anyone if someone does not succeed. The environment is provided. There are other programs of government which I suggest that we will talk at another forum. Programs of electricity to the villages, programs of health, health facilities to the, uh, to the sub-counties, programs of even schools, other schools to every sub-county, Government will continue in a phased way to establish those programs across the country. But it is important for you students to know that Uganda is now united from north to east, from south to west. We are united, and those are the results of the NRM government. We preach unity and we do not encourage sectarianism on the account of tribe, on the account of gender, on the account of, account of religion, on the account of age, for you to start saying that we are young. Those ones are old. We should work together as human beings. We have our president, President Museveni, he may be an elder, but you need that wisdom from him. And he's an elder, he values you, the youth, and that's why most of the government programs are for the youth. 
So I would like to encourage the students to always value each other even when they are of differing ages. There is the last thing that I would like to, to thank His Excellency the President for, which the leaders here may not be aware. There is a problem of medical tourism in most of the developing countries. And Uganda is trying to cure that medical tourism. Patients flying out of the country within Africa or even without to seek medical attention. Mulago Specialized Hospital has been developed to the extent that it can solve some cases which used to be referred outside the country for medical attention. But His Excellency, the President, has taken another decision to establish two specialized hospitals in Uganda. Hospitals which will solve the problem of medical tourism. Hospitals which are equivalent to those hospitals in Europe or India or America where people normally fly to get attention. So two such hospitals are going to be established in Uganda, one in the Rainbow District and one in Katapi District. <laughs> Rainbow District to serve the other axis of the country and Katapi District to serve this axis of the country. <laughs> so at an appropriate time, the people who are relevant in terms of uh, Department of Health will be given details, but consultations have already started. So such a president, which is who is strategic like that, is not very easy to let go. And that's why when we move around, we always remind you that in 2026, His Excellency President Museveni is still with us. I would like to stop here and promise that when I go back to Katakui, if I get my cow still there, you know, the people who disturb us in Katakui are our uncles. Karamojongs are our uncles. Did you know that? The RCC is not here today. It affects his uncle. Now I have cows there, sometimes they come and take, sometimes they dodge, sometimes they... So those people, we came with them from Abyssinia. A long time ago, history, teacher, teachers of history know this. We came from Abyssinia, they call it the, the current Ethiopia now. Then some people remain in Sudan, some people remain in Kenya, in Turkana. Then the Karamojongs and us, we crossed. The Karamojongs remained there, the Tesok remained here, came here, and then some even went to Katakwa in the Busia County. So apparently, when, we, when I went to Ethiopia, sometime back when I was the Minister of Education, I found that the cows, those cows are still there in Ethiopia. They shot horned cows. But the president has managed them to some extent. But they still cross over, they cross over. But even those few who cross over are going to be handled in the near future. That cataracy will stop completely. Inside Karamoja, but also in neighboring areas, it will stop. Because in Karamoja now we want factories. The cement factories are being established so that Karachuna go and work in the factories. The professor knows a village called the Odom in Katapi. There was a time Karam Karamojongs came from there wanting to take cows, but they got soldiers. So they chased them away. 
In that village, the president's friend is there, where the president one time pumped because of the same problem. So when they found that they, they were just, then they went back and started resting on the tree. Apparently, some of them are educated. Not even apparently, but surprisingly. <laughs> then the one who is educated started telling the other ones a story. Are there Karamojong people here? Put up their hands. You clap for those uncles. I think I even have one or two who are being peaceful. Clap for those uncles. And I want those uncles to be very happy when I'm telling this story. Because I want you to share with the other uncles who are at home. Now this uncle started telling the other others. And I am not talking to accuse you, you are completely innocent. So I will check there if I still have those cows, because I have some cows in dotted areas, dotted areas. If I get them out, they will be again bull roasting in this test of land. I don't know whether the other two bulls were enough. If they were not enough, you tell me, so that this time I bring three. <laughs> so that it is really good roasting. <laughs> is, is the husband of Ademun here? The husband of Ademun, you also tell Ademun, Dr. Ademun. There is no way Teso College where I'm honorary alumni can roast bulls. And no, Mora High School where I'm a direct alumni is not roasting bulls. <laughs> I didn't make this announcement because it was not an award ceremony. It was a computer run. It was a computer run. So as the bulls will be brought here, even Mora High School will be roasting. but would like the school to teach you hard work and practical skills. There is a school farm which has been alluded to. And in the last award ceremony, I promised the school farm heifers. Yes, Who followed the heifers? <laughs> Did anyone here follow the heifers? No. Nothing. People now became like the other people who Jesus treated and just, Jesus treated and one only one came back. The others did what? But don't start talking those things to your teachers. <laughs> that is only me who is allowed to talk those stories of the Bible. And teacher, if the students start talking that, be giving that example for you and you tell me. <laughs> then I will come back and talk to them. So the hay pass up, me I'm prepared. So that the school, the school should demonstrate that this is what we want you to go when you leave school. Even when you're a professor, even when you're a vice president, even when you're a president, you must have a goat, a cow, a sheep. You must have a poultry, you must have a fish farm. Because we all have our villages where we can establish that. As you are doing, you know, work somewhere else. And even if you don't have work somewhere else, that becomes an economic enterprise. Because we are now teaching the new curriculum which emphasizes practical skills. So when you see those favors here, then you know how much milk is that, how much money is that. Immediately you finish on the vacation, you can even make one enterprise. So the schools should be encouraged to do as many enterprises as possible, because it becomes a nursery bed for these learners to, to get the example which they can implement in the world of work. I would have added more and more examples but I know it's lunch time, and I do not want to force us to continue fasting. When we are supposed to receive Jesus in the hay fast, we only need to exchange the modality, and then we get the program running. I will remind His Excellency the President about the pledge of the 200 computers, and many other, many other challenges which have been raised in this 
uh, memo of the head teacher. He may not, uh, you may not have heard him speak, but he spoke in silence. Sometimes it is stronger when you speak in silence, especially on the part of the challenges. I will make uh, them known to His Excellency the President and Mama, the Minister of Education and Sports. You're very much lucky to receive that award, and it's none other than to the VP who is inspiring you. Um, the second team is the comprising three: Egola Miklos. Hold your, your certificate, share this place so that it can be taken. We want to appreciate the media. I'm seeing you busy. The journalists are in the house. Thank you so much for coming and add your other media houses. We also give lots of certificates and a token of appreciation for their outstanding achievements. 